says what you do comes from what you think. So that's probably the clearest statement in the course of the connection between the two. That the doing and action always proceed forth from from thinking. And since your background in, in profession is in architecture, I know we've talked briefly about uh, form and content, or um, form and purpose, how, how form should, could, should be pretty much guided and shaped by, by the principle or the purpose that's underneath it. We've talked about it in terms of like use of space, you know, what's efficient, getting away from just aesthetics, for the sake of aesthetics, to how, do, how does the purpose, the underlying purpose or content, really guide and shape the aesthetics. And it's pretty much the same with thinking and, and action, that we have to really become really consistent and clear in our thought processes for the actions to flow from those thought processes. And when we think of them as two separate things and not being connected, uh, then there isn't a sense of, of harmony. Uh, it's, it's almost, it's more of a sense of autonomy, as if actions have, are just completely autonomous. And, and what I would say is this whole world is, is, um, is kind of like the Pinocchio syndrome. Uh, the story of Pinocchio is, is that he, Geppetto, is a puppet maker, he makes the marionette, and Pinocchio is a marionette on the strings. You <coughs> see, when, when a marionette is on the strings, there's a direct connection between the one who holds the, the crossbow and the movement of the puppet, uh, because of the strings. But Pinocchio is not satisfied with being a puppet and he wants to get off the strings and become a real boy. Mm -hmm. This is the problem of the world, is that human beings believe that they're autonomous boys and girls and men and women, and they don't acknowledge the strings anymore. Even though it's important to acknowledge the strings, because even though the body seems to act independently, and it seems to have autonomous behavior that's separate from all the other uh, people, it's not so. Uh, when you go deeper into spirituality, you realize that, that whether the strings are now gone, and none of us have the strings anymore, uh, so we don't consider ourselves um, puppets in a physical sense. Some of us still feel much like we're puppets of the system, or we're puppets to our partners and spouses, or to our parents. We still act in certain ways like puppets when we're around our parents. And people tell us so. You're not the same person when you're with your mother and father. You act completely different <laughs> when you go into their house. Like you're still their baby or something, you know, and you still have all these associations. But there are mental strings that are moving the puppets. And we have to start to acknowledge those invisible strings and conditions. So there is a, a very direct connection between action and thought. And it seems pretty, pretty invisible because the ego belief is that we're, we have minds of our own, we have thoughts of our own, and we have bodies of our own. And all of that would support that we are completely autonomous beings. That human beings are autonomous individuals. And nothing could be further from the truth. That is all a lie, it's all a misperception, and it's all part of the ego's plan to come up with something that will be kind of satisfying and, and fascinating and curious and intriguing to take the place of pure oneness, which to the ego is boring, boring, boring. There is nothing more boring to the ego than oneness. Uh, sameness, oh, where variety is the spice of life, diversity, differences, spice it up. Even when we talk about romances, we would say, how's the chemistry? You know, <laughs> we like to have some spice in there. You know, how did your first date go? Oh, we are, we are completely the same. Uh, we are just totally the same. 
Listen, we had our whole conversation with sameness, 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 and we talked about our life together, we could share with all of our sameness. No, no, the spice is the chemistry, is the differences. That's what makes it alluring, that's what makes it juicy. You know, if, it, if you're both identical, it's like, well, what's the fun in that? <laughs> Just relating to yourself, spiritually, that's a good thing. Relating to yourself, to the ego, it's a bad thing. You need to spice it up. So, to go back to the Pinocchio analogy, uh, Pinocchio is dissatisfied with being a puppet, and he, he dreams of being a real boy. And so he listens to, uh, or we should say, he doesn't really listen to Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy Cricket is the Holy Spirit, is the voice of his higher self, his consciousness who's there to guide him and help him uh, navigate and to come back to a sense of, of wholeness and harmony. But he doesn't listen to Jiminy Cricket and he goes to Pleasure Island. Uh, immediate gratification, that's the ego, it wants just immediate gratification. And it's got its own sense of it wants to play, it wants to have pleasure. And then the little boys is it turn into have, have donkeys. Uh, it's quite a strong consequence for not listening <coughs> to Jiminy Cricket, and it's a shocking consequence. And the same thing that we experience in this world, when we don't tune into spirit, we try to do it on our own in an autonomous way. I can do it better than God. I don't need any guidance. I don't need any help. I can do it all on my own. There's some shocking consequences. Mm -hmm. We may not feel like half person, half donkey, but we, we feel very disconnected, fragmented, lonely, isolated. You know, there are shocking consequences that are not natural to our peace of mind. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we tend to feel very conflicted, we, we tend to face a lot of drama, we, have, we go from crisis to crisis. And instead of just flowing in joy and love and happiness, <coughs> Our life turns into crisis management. How do we handle the next crisis? How do we handle the next drama? And, and even when we're flowing a little bit, we start to put so much attention and energy into the future potential crises. So we get locked up into insurance schemes and guarding against the repeating of horrific past consequences. And we spend our time not really living in the moment, but all caught up into believing all, all these hurtful consequences are real, having a lot of painful memories and hurts and grievances, and then skipping over our present joy and focusing all our attention into doing things for the future to avoid those past consequences. And therefore, you know, believe we're black gliding down the highway when in fact we're slip sliding away, mm -hmm. uh, as Paul Simon would say. So that's why we, it, it, it's very important to understand that connection between the thoughts and the actions and to, I would say, to get back on the strings. But realize that the Holy Spirit is the one that we're, when we talk about our back on the strings, letting the Holy Spirit guide our thoughts joining with God, thinking with God, and then letting the actions flow from that connection in mind. That makes it easy. That's, that's actually how things, things flow. So our, everything we think and say and do is in perfect integrity and perfect harmony. If you look at the Gospels too, you see that Jesus, he doesn't talk a whole lot about the future. You know, he says things like, let the morrow take care of the morrow. Uh, he's not really big on planning either. <clears throat> Much unlike most human beings, you don't really see Jesus doing a lot of planning. His idea of planning is turning to the apostles and saying, we go to Bethesda, or we go to Copernicum, or, you know, that's, that's his idea of planning. That's pretty spontaneous. We go. Uh, Whoa, 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 we go, we like it here, we go. <laughs> or when he's going back to Jerusalem at the end of his ministry, it's, 
Peter steps in front of him and says, Lord, we will not let you go back to Jerusalem. It's too dangerous there, you know, you could, harm could come to you, you could be killed if you go back there. We won't let you. And anybody, you can remember his, his response to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Doesn't want anything blocking that spontaneity. I go. <laughs> oh no you don't. Oh yes I do. <laughs> get thee behind me, Satan. I go. The script is written, I have, a, I have a life that I'm demonstrating, a connection with God, and there is no interrupting what is given from Spirit in, in thinking and the actions. He, it wasn't a debate. It wasn't a democracy. He didn't say, okay, there's twelve of you, let's take a vote. How many say I go? How many say I stay? <laughs> it's just like, I go. And that's what we want. We want the certainty of being inspired, so we don't have to have a big committee meeting about what we're going to be doing, you know. That it's just given. That it just flows spontaneously. We don't have to figure it out. All the energy we spend on analyzing, comparing, contrasting, weighing the pros and the cons, that's a lot of work to make a decision, you know, which we've all felt could be a lot simpler than all this meeting and synthesizing and analyzing, you know, there must be a way, must be a better way to live than, than that kind of analysis. Thank you.